your neighbor. He is stealing dogs when you are stealing phones. As High Commissioner, I was wrong. As Charandas Prasad, I reacted naturally how any person would have. I did not come here for, for, for that kind of abuse. I did not come here for that kind of abuse. If you're going to go along that road, I'll walk off. But it's all okay once they're talking. If they were talking, I could not have been here today. You got ADHD. Mm -hmm. ADHD. I got that thing. Thing. No, 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 calm, calm down, calm down. I think I've done enough in terms of taking our team um, out of trouble from losing. Come on, Lou Taylor. They, they, they got, they got screwed. I'm reading the script now, and the first person that comes to my mind to play a detective, yes, but an erratic detective, is Mickey Rodriguez. Why you not freaking supper in young? Why a man and supper woman? Look, you deal with that. You deal with that. We must encourage platforms like this because it brings together different people and allows for discussions. To, to take place in our country on a multiplicity of fundamental issues. Uh, KW, you apologizing for no, something no, 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 you think no, no. I did is wrong. I don't no, no. want you to do that and you should not have done that. Hi, good evening and welcome once again to the Gildari Freddy Kisson Show. My name is Leonard Gildari. It's been a couple of months, maybe three months, just over three months I've been miss, uh, missing in action, uh, you know, job-wise, uh, family-wise and everything else, and I so miss you guys. So I was good to sit here and engage in things that are, are important to this country. And of course, I want to say good night to uh, my colleague, long-standing um, newsman, columnist in this country. He's been at it and still going very, very strong. I must, must say, pretty much stronger than I am. Um, good night, Freddy Kisun. I know that during the period that I was off, and I tell you, a lot of stuff happened between then to myself and uh, during that time also in this country. And um, I paid very, very close attention. I followed the, the show. I see it still very, going very strong. I, I am happy that you guys continue with Akash, uh, continue to raise issues uh, which affect this country and to, you know, to, to, to raise those talking points. Uh, it has been, um, uh, we have to continue to agitate for a better Guyana. Um, I'm doing my own thing, but I'm going to just pass over to you. We could probably banter a little over the uh, next couple of minutes as we prepare to open the lines after that. So many things happening in this country. The development is crazy. I can tell you there's a major labor shortage. Um, uh, we have to get ready uh, to cater to handle that, uh, I know the government, uh, there's, they, they are worried about that labor situation. I am worried because it is impacting on myself and, and what we do in, in the sphere of business. Over to you, Freddie. Well, nice to have you back. The lines are on the screen. Please call in and talk about anything you want to, anything at all. Yeah, I understand that um, there's a labor sergeant, but you've been, you haven't been around, so you, you take over, man. It's your, it's your, it's your show tonight. Well, so I, I saw a lot of things happening. I saw, of course, um, Danny's critic and the the, the quarrel that was going on uh, between him and the Mohammeds. Um, and and I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, I don't want us as a country, we, we, we're going to divorce ourselves from that. Uh, we, we are an independent entity here. Um, uh, this forum here is very independent. I made that very clear from the onset. We're not going to be uh, drawn into to any fist fight or anything because we have our um, engagements in a particular direction. I think you understand uh, where, where you want it to go. And the beautiful thing about this show, we agree to disagree um, on many issues and uh, and we could agree on a lot of issues. So I think one of them would uh, ultimately be the development of this country, the, 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 the going forward of this country um, to where we want it to be. It is not about us anymore. We are um, just shepherd in this country 
to uh, where we want our kids or grandchildren to, to, to have a beautiful Guyana. Um, it will not be lost on all Guyana uh, how important this country has become in the entire Caribbean, in the entire world. We know the big fight and uh, uh, everything that is happening. Everybody's rushing towards Guyana. I, I read in the news the last couple of days that even the head of the America's, the US uh, CIA is head into Guyana or has been in Guyana within the next few days we have a former US president well known all over the world household name I would dare say Bill Clinton is going to be here what are the importance of those uh, visits to Guyana at this point in time what I could tell you is that uh, based on our analysis and everybody knows Guyana's emerged to become one of the most important country in this hemisphere in the world, in fact, uh, not only because of uh, where we located and not only because of oil, but we have, we've started to take the lead um, in in a lot of things. Uh, recently, we saw the Haiti issue, and uh, and that is a situation that really worried me. And I saw the big quarrel as to why, if you if Air Finale is is really serious about. Um, open uh, or or being serious about being nice to the people of Haiti, why doesn't he allow them to flood in? And I saw the argument that we uh, would have restricted the visa. The reality is, while it was at Kaiser News, we know that the, the Haitians and the, the Cubans were being um, brought into this country in a very um, um, questionable manner, and there were names being called, and, uh, and, and uh, when they checked the records here, it is clear that they weren't just bringing them for trade, that they're just using it as a transit point. There could be arguments for and against that. But uh, bottom line is our country is really uh, flying right now. Uh, you could drive down the East Bank and across this country and see what is happening. Um, worry something. We have some fallouts because of the number of businesses that is is being registered by locals. You have a lot of people coming up and inexperience and the inability to handle uh, a workforce. Uh, you see in the security sector, the big problem that we have with guns being hand uh, landed in, in a lot of people's hands, a lot of illegal guns. And then you have the handling of legal guns too, licensed guns, which are being put in, in, in people's hands as young as 22 years old. Freddie Kisun, that's something that um, uh, terrorizes my soul. Um, I hope that we get that fixed. I saw the Minister of Home Affairs recently when that guy picked up that AR rifle and he killed that twin sister. The Home Affairs Minister, Robeson Ben, says that he has ordered everything to be held. And I think the uh, Commissioner of Police would have ordered that that company stop doing business. Somebody overturned it. I saw the news today. Um, but what is worrisome uh, about that is that I think too many guns out there, and I believe there's a perception that there may be an increase in um, aggravated robbery, among all those other things. A few days back, girl robbed right in her yard uh, by young boys. Um, not a very good thing. But um, I've been paying very close attention, but I miss the people out there. I miss being here talking. I am going to try to make it to keep it up, but you've been carrying the load of it, which I do appreciate because we can't forget our mandate uh, to the people of this country, which is that we are here to agitate, to push for the topics, um, the things that bother us. And people out there, they have a lot of issues, um, um, whether it's uh, the teachers, whether they're the pensioners, whether, you know, the normal John in the street. People are worried. People want service. People want contractors to deliver those services to the people. People want value for the money, especially when taxpayers' dollars are being paid. We have our challenges, but um, these are things as a country grows, um, you would know we are going to be faced with, uh, with those challenges. Well, it's difficult to analyze. I, I think the, the experts in the world, the academics at the universities around the world, they have to find some explanation as to why there's a deluge of important American people here. It's before the CIA guy came, and before Mr. Well, Mr. Clinton is coming, there's been congressional delegations. There have been um, 
important administration officials. So it needs, it really needs some analysis. If people call in, uh, we'd like to hear what are their views. The phone lines are open. Now, you, you, to have the CIA director in a country that is not a major strategic geopolitical player in the world, uh, it means that visit says that the country is going in a certain direction that the United States have an interest in. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's curious, why would the CIA director come in? Why would Mr. Clinton come in? Don't forget, we talk about a former president. A former prime minister was just as equally known around the world, came here too, Tony Blair. Mm -hmm. Tony Blair, I think, has won more elections than any other British prime minister. Three, I think, uh, consecutively. So, uh, you know, the Secretary of State Blinken was here. What do, um, what do we put in it? There's a, is it a number of reasons or, it, or is it there's one particular reason? If it's there's one particular reason, it could be, I would think, oil. Mm -hmm. uh, the United States is losing ground in the Middle East. I think the United States' major, major friend in the Middle East was Saudi Arabia. And I, I believe Saudi Arabia is going in a direction of a certain, a certain itself as a major player in that part of the world. And I'm not too sure it, it would want to be a sycophant to the U.S. as it was uh, so many decades ago. But the simple reason is that we're now moving to a multipolar world. I don't think anybody who is at university studying international relations would see the world as the United States as a center and controlling everything. No, I think China is a very, very, very um, serious competitor uh, to the United States that may have advantages that the U.S. Uh, has lost. Uh, I think China is, is very extensive in Africa and in the third world. So it could be oil in which they want to guarantee that this is uh, a stable supply, that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge fine, the, the, the world is changing, and they may want to shift this dependence on, on the Middle East. And don't forget, I think the world has changed forever, maybe for a long time to come, with the war that the Israelis have per perpetuated in Gaza. I don't want to say a war, because by, any, by using any concept of what a war means, it's not a war. A war is two countries, two armies fighting. There's nobody fighting in Gaza. Gaza is just being bombed. And then there's the guerrilla warfare of, of the Hamas militants. So the United States has lost out terribly in the third world because of the position it's taking on Europe. I don't think anybody seriously in the global south would pay any attention to what's going on in era, uh, uh, Ukraine. They would say, what? What are, you tell, what are you talking about Ukraine? You see what's happening in Gaza. So it, it, it could be the shift away from the Middle East and for the next 30 years, a guarantee of oil. That's one. It could also be that the Guyana is emerging as a major player and they may want to steer Guyana away from um, a more third worldist position. I think all the presidents of this country, beginning with the premier uh, 1953, when we had the first self-government, coming right down the line to Hoyt, uh, then Chedi Jagan, then Barra Jack Dew. I don't think any one of our presidents is wants Guyana to be up under up under the arms of any particular government. None of our presidents have fashion of foreign policy in which we fasten up under one particular country. No, we have had a, a radical, 
uh, independent foreign policy from the time we became independent. So I don't know if because of Guyana's emergence now as a, a, a as a, a oil player in the world, United States may want to see it as maybe going its own way and influencing other countries. That's the second explanation. If you're looking at us, please call in. The third explanation could be Venezuela. Um, it doesn't look like there's going to be a competitive free election in Venezuela. And if Maduro should do anything, either rigging the election or not holding the election, you're going to have a geopolitical competition between the West and China and Russia. Uh, and it may have implications for Guyana. So I don't know if they're coming here to discuss all those scenarios. But three persons, four persons, that, that, three persons that came here, one that's coming, means that something is going on in Guyana. And that's the UK former Prime Minister Tony Blair, the Secretary of State Blinken, and uh, the CIA guy now, and Mr. Clinton coming. And don't forget, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., that's a cabinet position. She was also here. So things are going on, and I, I would think that given our tradition in international relations, beginning from the first self-government in 1953, I can't see Guyana going into the direction of depending on any particular country. And it doesn't need to do that anymore. It doesn't need to do that. When you have a major oil fine and oil is in demand all over the world, why would you want to be like a, a Taiwan or a Israel and just fasten yourself on the one particular country? I don't think Guyana will do that at all. I don't think not at all. I think you're spot on with almost everything. It has to be a mix of reasons. Uh, one, the Venezuela issue. Two, our um, emergence as one of the world leaders in the oil producing country. Um, uh, so you, I think America recognizes that. I think significant in this entire discussion would also be Guyana, I think if you would have heard the utterances of um, of Bajak due to as a vice president and as a general secretary of his party, they would have made it very clear that nobody dictates to Guyana. So you have, a, I think there's a recognition that Guyana could stand on its own. And uh, I think that is to be respected. Uh, I think everybody around the, the world, they, they want a piece of Guyana, but at the same time, we have got to learn to be strong. And again, this background too, don't forget next year's election, the general elections once again. I can't believe that five years would have uh, so um, passed so Time very quickly. Just flying, yeah, know. it just flies. Um, then there is uh, the PPP is going to have their um, uh, what what do you call it? The, the Congress, Congress in right, August. Uh, later yeah, and this the year. PNC. Yeah. And the PNC later this year. Um, in August. I'm betting. One in May, uh, one in August. I'm betting that there's going to be a change in the leadership uh, based on, if you're a betting person, uh, in the leadership of the PNC. I'm seeing too much of, of chatter there, and it doesn't, I don't believe that they're, 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 there's a lot of happiness with um, uh, Corbyn. Uh, it doesn't Norton. surprise me. Uh, sorry, yeah, um, Mr. Norton. I don't believe there's a, there, there's a lot of happiness there, and I, I believe there, there's going to be a shift into the leadership. Uh, position here, and um, I see some front runners. Um, uh, obviously, uh, our lady that was here a few weeks, a few months back, uh, the stand so tall. Yes, um, and then there's also the lawyer. Boisel Ford. Boisel Ford. I think those two uh, look in the pretty then hot there's, the um, Then there's um, the army guy, I think. Gay best? Yeah, yeah. It, that, those, those, those could, I think yeah. his name, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I don't believe um, there you could expect any shift of the leadership of the PNC. I think by Jack there has been leading. Um, he's very focused. Oh, in the PPP. Um, in the PPP. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's my belief that it's going to remain but i think enough of chatter i think we could start opening up the lines 637 oh, please huh? yeah, please yeah hey, colin let's talk about everything under the sun uh, short sweet no cussing i don't cuss anybody 231-2982 and of course 637-1071 you guys go right ahead and call us uh, let us hear those calls it's good to hear from you and pretty it's good to be with you again in the studio talking to people in this country and of course the diaspora but what's happening with the the traffic there where you live? I it it is there. east. Let me tell you this. Um, in the meantime, while those calls, I hoping that those calls come through. Um, uh, I could tell you that traffic on these bankers is considerably, and that is something I'm very happy. We multiplying the numbers of cars uh, by tenfold, and when you look at what's happening on these banks, there of course the sand truck still doing the madness, but development but um it is eased considerably on these bank there i'm hoping that um we can have that over that's because to people taking road. the other the right. other road the, uh, it is eased considerably and it, it is not helped. by the bridge though the well bridge the bridge is always going to have a bottleneck until uh, they come i think if you're driving across the harbor bridge there you're going to see something if you're driving across the river on your left hand side in order to build that fancy bridge that we're looking at there, which is probably going to be a world best, um, you have a temporary bridge there. Talk about that in a short while. Good evening, Carlo. Good evening to you guys. Nice to have you back again on the program, man. Thank you very much, sir. Go right ahead. Yeah, man, we got this problem at Red Road here with this nice nuisance and this car park. We fed up completely the presentation. Of the Red Road car park? Yeah, so Red Road, eh? if you find this car walking with the other man doing all the music from morning till midnight. Uh, let me stop you right there. A few weeks back, <laughs> I was in by an insurance company to renew my car insurance. And we got to the conversation with the clerk about uh, insurance and how do they issue those insurance for the um, for the private hire cars? What I call private, not private hire cars. Yeah. Private cars working as hire cars. And he says, "Would you believe it if I tell you something?" I said, "I know what you're gonna say to me." And he says, "The majority of those cars that operate out there." Uh, yeah. private guys working which is a breach a clear breach of the insurance if you get in an accident if you don't know let me tell you all I, I said it many times get in an accident you ain't get no insurance to get because that car is not insured to work as a higher car and he said the majority yeah. of the cars that are working there are owned guess what you want to say it or you want me to say it oh, yeah. like policeman uh, yes the, the insurance man told me that i won't say which insurance company it is but yeah. it is a fact so we see things we we know things but we do nothing about those things what what we see ex-police guy he broke up i could call him car number and line i don't no know. no don't do that this man, this man running with a bear in his hand so passing that i'm drinking all day and the car park and the police are operating in the middle of the road directing traffic and like you see nothing because you got to see the speed when they drive through the street as, as if there's nothing. I, I passed the other night, one of them in the diamond trench. If you see what's going on here right now, the road block one lane block right through the bank road, all illegal rum shop through up every afternoon, one lane block. People going into the mall is hell for going and come out. Yeah, but I don't know. Um, uh, I you have Mr. Wolfson yeah. Ben is listening. Yeah, the, the, this... There seems to be a New York situation whenever anything happened, like a gun, like like what happened with the AR rifle the other day, that uh, man went, pick up the AR rifle, and then went and killed that twin sister. I'm, I'm not sure whether there was an intention to kill the twin sister. He probably wanted to kill the other sister. But um, there's a New York, it's my impression, there's a New York situation when anything yeah, catastrophic, yeah, traumatic yeah, happens. They got, they got gangs over there right now. You see, you would have gone in like Yeah, they need to nip it in the bud. Very quickly. Not. Very uh, quickly. You guys Thank you very much, sir. Bye bye. Yeah. yeah you. Well, in, I don't in the know meantime, that place. It seemed to be um. What happened Chateau to you guys? Six three seven ten seven to one. It looks as if everybody. But you know what? What is a good thing? The police got cameras all over the place. It's so fast. You believe it's it it was um 
difficult to pick up those guys they're not very smart they go rob the girl in the yard and cameras all over the place there's a ring around the city with cameras and unless you know where to go and the police know how to get those cameras and and everybody seems to get a camera in the house except you maybe mm-hmm. you need to get a camera gonna get your ring 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 bell or something yeah um Two three one two nine eight two or uh, six, uh, six three seven ten seven to one. People complain about it before. What I don't know where it is or what it is. No, Red Road is that road that leads between Sarwan Mall and Princess. That is okay, Red Road, okay. and so it has become a main um, entrance to the mall. Um, and so there's a lot of business place through there. The, the, they're building that into four lane. I understand now they're digging all the trends. They're falling. It, it's remarkable work what is happening here. And who don't, don't want to learn capacity? You're going to learn it. What happened with you guys? You are sleeping tonight. Two three one two nine eight two six three seven ten seven to one. Let's get those calls coming in. Um. Uh. Maybe in the meantime, Freddie and I could talk something. We could start fighting or something. I there, don't know. There, there's there, there are a couple of things um we can talk about that people need to zoom in. Look, since I was a uh, uh, a university student, the textbook tell the textbook tells you that a indispensable source of stability of a country is the judiciary. And I think people people have are losing faith in the judiciary. The things that go on in the judiciary now, there's a there's a law. There's a law Glenal Gildali. Anyway, look. Good evening, caller. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Um we did, as Lisa Ferry was talking about the Americans coming here. But I'm glad the Americans coming here because we have a problem with Venezuela. You see what the man do today? You see what the Venezuela president do? The, um, you see he signed um, as he people into law. They've been signing a lot of stuff as to whether that, that has any implication. Well, it has implications, but it, it has a, a situation. The elections later this year, you got to do whatever it is. But of course, you as a country, um, they should always be worried as to what it is. When you're dealing with a madman um, uh, that doesn't really care well, about the rule of law. I feel more safe that the Americans is, uh, of course. Bill Clinton is here and the CIA money. And because we got to clean up a lot of drugs, people here too, you know. Because you remember, there's a lot of mad people down the road, you know. We got to clean up a lot. We got to send away some of the drugs, bar on to America and put them lifetime in jail, you know. And the thing is, it's with the murder. I want to bring back, if the president could bring back the hanging, because this thing getting out today, the murder getting out of style. But you know the hanging is not a president decision. They got a wall thing that we sign on to. Um, yeah, but, a but lot, a lot of things. this one sign in China. Uh-huh. What China does do? When they pass the law in half a word, um, hour, they just carry around a wall and shoot you, you know. <laughs> yeah, they just carry around with you. a wall and they just shoot you quick and get rid of you fast, fast trial in every day. Donald Trump talk about it. No, are you, you, um, you, um, you quoting of all people, man, Donald Trump? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Donald Trump, Donald Trump is a boss. Well, so you have to get them sort among the intellect to do like what Donald Trump do. Well, I, so the, the, and the, listen one time, and the treasures of Donald Trump got that Donald Trump is a boss. I read but about Donald Trump. Donald yeah. Trump went to three universities. Donald Trump what went to Donald three Trump universities. Do, what, what Donald Trump achieved in life? Donald Trump went, went to no three universities, so. You um, you're reading the wrong things and you believe in the wrong things. I listen to my not reading the wrong things. You're reading the wrong things. Donald Trump didn't go to three universities. Donald Trump probably said that, and you buy it hook, link, and no, sinker. No, that's what I'm saying. So, 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 three so, the New York Times. Donald Ta- Trump get all the knowledge. So, the New York uh, Times. Well, forget all these. So, um, assets we, uh, uh, so uh, you got to keep reading the C- the CNN and other news people have did a fact check on all the things Donald uh, Trump said. And 90% are fictional. You gotta keep reading and read and read and listen to the right people, man. Mr. Mr. You're Mr. quoting Donald Trump. Mr. Well, look, uh, that's, uh, so, 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 so you're entitled to your views. You gotta get, you gotta get mm-hmm. all the big um, editing and everything on the phone. You gotta get a big set of knowledge. What this man achieved, no people can, you know what, why, why um, um, you and people against this man is envious and jealousy. 
<laughs> I don't Tell understand what. You, you think, you, do you believe you, you have a theory that Freddie wants to become the president of the United States? You think so? No, oh, not a president. <laughs> um, and I, I respect Freddie this one. But you know how he ain't got, he ain't got it. Everybody wants to do the whole thing. Freddie can't do what Donald Trump does do. Donald Trump is the boss. Well, whether you like it or not, everything is, seems to be putting him in the, uh, ahead of uh, far ahead. I'm glad. And he's going to so become the next have... president again. You learn so United much. He's going he go to be the president. You learn so much from these calling. All right. Thank, thank well, you. All right. Thank you for coming through there. 637. 637-1071-231-2982. You learn so much from these calling programs. Let us get those cards. If it was a, if it was a, a white supremacist from Mississippi saying those things, I could understand. Yeah. No, but hold on. No, 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 Freddie. Um, that might not be. I, 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 I go to New York and I, I, I talk to people. Um, uh, I reach people, middle class people, normal people. Uh, them don't want um Biden to go back there. They prefer um uh, Trump. It doesn't really matter. Good evening, caller. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Welcome back to the program, brother. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Go right ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I want to pick up on a point that the last caller made with the death penalty, and you responded. I think we signed on, I think, to, or Freddie responded, so we signed on to the international convention. No, um, Gildavi said so. I don't think... Gildavi said, Gildavi oh, yes, said, right? So. I, I, I'm I, not too sure. From, from what I can recall, the death penalty is still on our books. Yes, it is. Law, it is, it is. We have to do a referendum to take it off. It's not coming off the books like that, so it is still an active law. It's just that we choose... Yeah. Yeah, we choose that. Yeah, there's, there's there's no there's no international body that says we cannot carry out the death penalty. Yeah, we chose we chose to do that. The international too. body will make you sign on to these conventions, like for example the US. Yes, thank you. Yeah. You know, I had raised this issue. I had an interview with uh, former President David Granger when, when he was in office. And um, I had raised this issue here. And I seem to get the impression that none of the, I don't think the PPP and neither the, the PNCR or AFC is uh, once ahead in that direction. I'm not, I don't believe they would want to, even though it's written in the books and whether uh, the international. I don't think they want to do it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. No, no. I, I got um. Okay, there's a uh, there's a call on the line. Thanks for coming through, sir. But I I will talk about that death penalty thing. You want to take Roger. that? Right. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, caller. Hello. Hi. Good evening, gentlemen. Good. Hi. Good evening, gentlemen. Go Thanks ahead, for taking sir. my call. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Uh, good work. Good work. Uh, nice to see you back. Um, uh, co-hosting with Freddie there. Thank you very much, sir. Go right ahead. Listen, I posted something on Facebook, and it's been debated right now on uh, one of these um, uh, group. I just want to put it out here on your platform and see what uh, the audience think. And you and uh, Freddie could also comment on it. I would appreciate that. And that is... What... what well, I'm, I'm putting out an idea here that um, shouldn't Guyanese, overseas-based Guyanese, uh, get the same pension as Guyanese pensioners are receiving in Guyana? Well, I, I, I miss Knowing that. You, you're saying that the Guyanese who live in overseas should get the same pension as the ones living in Guyana? That is correct. Um, saying shouldn't that happen? Knowing that you know, I mean, they are still Guyanese. No, no, no. You, 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 um, no, you got some wires crossed. If people reach mm -hmm. sixty-five and they're entitled mm -hmm. to a pension, when they go abroad, they still get that pension. Um, I don't. So you have to contextualize it. You're talking about somebody that have left Guyana and when they reach mm -hmm. sixty, when they reach sixty-five. In the other country, they could apply for the pension uh -huh. and get it. That's what you're talking about. Be yes, sir. Oh, so so when you reach 65, if you're living abroad, you apply for the pension. But um, Thank God. yeah, there's I, several. I, I, there's, 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 okay, the, this issue sure came up that. several, several yeah. times. One, uh -huh. you're talking. The, so you have your, there's, there's several pensions. You can have a workplace pension. I remember a guy used to. Oh, no, he's talking about you talking about senior citizen pension, right? The, the old age pension. Old, yeah, 
Yeah, all senior citizen yes, fence. Yeah. I think we would have had um, uh, officials on this program here, and they've made it very clear that the priority are on the Guyanese who live in Guyana at the moment. Don't forget that no, the coffers, fine. yeah, the coffers are not unlimited. They, 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 we have now started to grow our coffers, and so those money are going to be put uh -huh. there. I fully agree that uh, you would want a perfect situation in which everybody could be able to apply, but I don't believe there's any country in the world um that really does those things there are conditions that are attached to to pensions if you work uh, throughout with gaisuku and you go abroad there's a pension that you get uh, 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 maybe from gaisuku and so on you would have your nis that is uh, accrued to you um as to the old age pension that the government give to you though the, i think it's discretionary on certain conditions that are set up because you have to be back here and show them that you're living here i happen to know that for a fact i don't believe i don't know of anything that has changed but so on your facebook page you're saying that well not you saying you're throwing out the suggestion how will they get the money how will they get the money where they're living so that will be a foreign exchange being used to get them the money no 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 not necessarily so uh, how do you get um, uh, Guyanese go back to Ghana, they, they vacation, you know, they have family there, you want to help out a, a relative, you know, you send them a raise. In this case, you open a bank account in Guyana and the money directly deposited into the account. And no, 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 it doesn't apply to anything. You have to have a, a, a card, um, well, a, a pension book. And the pension book is but, but, the money is paid directly to the pensioner or they have to sign for somebody to collect it. Well, I think that should be looked at as uh, also. I mean, these things are supposed to be like direct deposit by now. You know? I, I agree. So, that, that's I, down the line. I, I agree. That's, that's uh, down the line. I agree that when we that's start getting money, we start, should start looking after again. But obviously, Listen, the ones who are living here, I think I, I would agree. I agree with you. Right. I, I agree with you that the uh, priority should go to Guyanese right now. You have to look at also Guyanese who have worked in Guyana for years, you know, contribute to the development of a bankrupt country then, have moved across, still was sending remittance to Guyana. You guys know how much remittance uh, Guyana collected. Send, you know, uh, things like barrels to La Parker and other, um, you know, shipping company and, you know, didn't turn their back on Guyana. So, I agree with you. I so agree with now, you. I agree with you. Now that, yeah, at presently, I know it's not a lot coming in, but we are watching. I'm not a senior citizen, so, but I'm just thinking ahead. We are watching, we are reading not only Guyanese, um, in a uh, um, publication, but international publication, what they're seeing of the wealth that Guyana will be having, let's say five, ten years from now. And I find that, you know, as long as you're Guyanese and you retire or you, you, you know, you get to that age, a retirement age, you should have some sort of, um, you should partake, I should say, in the patrimony of uh you know in guyana and i i think you know that would be just fair i think you've raised some very because, important I mean, points here uh sir and i think it's something that we could ponder and chew on thank you very much for coming through and that is for the future it's for the future not right now and uh it's just something you know we should look down the line thank you very okay. much for that right. yes thanks, bye bye thanks for taking my call thank you sir bye bye good evening caller Greetings and salutations, gentlemen. Is it a funny and glory show? Yes, it is. Go right ahead. Yes, good evening, gentlemen. Now, I would like you to explain the situation at the conversation. Um, I think it's the conversation three road. It's a brand new road, beautiful road. Yeah, so, yeah. I don't live too far from there, right? You got to lower whatever you're listening to. We get enough feedback. Oh, sorry. Um, one sec. Um, now, my concern is the road is open, it's beautiful. I travel it every morning, every afternoon. But the problem is, there is no lights now. I know, I know, from... I know. I, I've, been told, I've been told it's coming soon. We, um, I, I, I made an inquiry about that because I have to use the 
all the time. I, I, just, I just live up the road, and I've been told the yeah. lights the lights will soon be installed. Yeah, but before then, people could lose their lives. I know, I know, why would I know. You, why I know, would they, you... they, they should, they should. It should be. Yeah. It, it should have been done as soon as the road finished. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I know. It's a, the it's light a, should be there before they open up the road. Yeah, it's Why a, would you open the road yeah. without the light? It's a headache. It's not to, logical. Yeah, it's not it, reasonable. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, People I, can lose their lives. It's I, dangerous crossing. I, I see it there. Yeah, I see it there. To go from yeah. Conversation Road onto the Atlantic Highway. Yeah, it's exactly. dangerous. Yeah. But I was told it's coming soon. Yeah, well, who's, the, who's in charge of planning? I mean, what's going on in this country? Well, we be really challenged at the moment, um, but I agree with you uh, on that. Um, I could tell you one of the things on the East Bank there, where I turn off from 7th Avenue there onto the access road that leads to the new four lane. Um, I could tell you we have, I have a problem with that, and I think I might have to ask public works to probably look into it. Uh, if you the median that they have between there, if you are sitting inside a sedan or what we call a sedan or the, or, or the, the the cars, you can't see over the median. So if you turn in a corner, it's a blind spot. And would you believe it? Every morning when I go there driving, all you just see is a lot of glasses on the road. So somebody is either fender bender or somebody there's an accident there. But I would ask for the. This is, this is in Diamond, uh, just by the access road where uh, the four lane is by, um, intersecting there. So uh, you come out from exactly. 7th Avenue there, and you can't see over that median that separates exactly. the, the Why is high, high I don't know who came up with that, but the, the cars, you could barely see the top of the cars, exactly. and that is a problem. All right, thank you exactly. for coming through, brother. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good evening, caller. Hi, good evening, caller. Hi, uh, good evening, uh, Freddie and uh, Greg. How are you guys doing today? Oh, pretty good, my brother. Go right ahead. All right, so there is a serious issue that is, uh, I think, affecting everybody across this country. And I don't know what the EPA or the traffic department is doing. See, there are these modified motorbikes with modified exhaust system. I think there was a company that propped up about two years ago, opening other branches across the city that is um, heavily involved in these modifications. And these guys are up and down one ways, wheeling, doing all kinds of nonsense. You got small kids, you got old people, no regard whatsoever. So, so I wrote about that in my column. I have to enjoy that. I live directly opposite Movie Town, which has a large, large car park, and they do it all weekends. And the Sheriff Security, Sheriff is a huge company in this country. They're building hospitals, hotels. And the Sheriff Security, there's a big sign, big huge sign at Movie Town. No noise, no revit. And it happens all the time. I, two years ago, Look, this is my country, and I know it with the back of my hand. I said if they don't nip this thing in the bud, it's going to get out of hand. Two years ago, Saul, I wrote that thing in my column. These guys modify their exhaust, and it yeah. makes a lot of noise. And guess where they ride their bikes? We don't have any highways like the U.S. where you're riding and it's just wilderness. Everybody That's lives right. near to the highway. Now, there are times when you don't know whether it's a gunfire or an exhaust, how these guys operate. And I'll go further to say that I've engaged a high-ranking uh, member of the traffic department. And you would be surprised to know that he made a couple of arrests and call came from the highest order to have these guys released without a charge, without any... Uh, prosecution whatsoever. So I'm thinking you got people out here that is above the law. And and this cannot be accepted. I mean, this thing is a, is a noise use and then the EPA need to step in seriously and start pulling in all these bikes and have them fix this once and for all. But you know why? You know why? I I I I, I written about it, I believed in it since I was young, that 
you know, we live in class divided society, so the well to do can do what they want. Mini boss people, if a mini boss is Route 40 and they're seen in West Coast, the police stop them, you're out of your zone. And they wouldn't stop these motorcycles. You you have you have a law that says so much of decibels right. is legal. I think the decibels either between nine or fifteen. You should see the, the those cars are playing music so loudly that they, they hit somebody they don't know. And, That's right. and That's the police right. look. You see that that motorcycle thing and the exhaust being modified. This 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 country of mine. I wrote about that thing. I called uh, uh, um, for the authorities to make a campaign about that exhaust thing. It's gone out of control but, now. But you see, I think it's out of, gone out of control. You, you now, see, so. in all this um, uh, discussion that we have in here, uh, these are noise. Um, the way that people drive the vehicle, you have two lanes going by, by, by the lights and one supposed to be a turning lane. And everybody used that outside lane to, to shift in and go into those to second and third That's lane. Correct. So That's correct. These, those are so I, I looked at the story this afternoon there that it was being carried. I don't know how true it is. I talked about it a little earlier. A company has breached. I don't agree with you shutting a company uh, just like that. But uh, the, the, it was issued by the Commissioner of Police for this company to stop doing business and return all the guns and everything. You have a security company. But you see, Freddie Kisun um, alluded to it a little earlier. When you have the judiciary and nobody respects uh, the judiciary or things happen in the judiciary and people do what they feel like in this country and contractors do what they feel like knowing that there they, they are no penalties, it's a wild west right out there, and that is how you have a breakdown. If politicians don't really, really give a damn. I have a politician uh, that I know don't say the crazy things, and, and, <laughs> and uh, I, I could tell you what so many, many other things. All of them, you want me to tell you something? Almost, this is Gildari saying it, it's not Freddie Kisun saying it. 80% of the politicians have done something illegal in office. <laughs> What do you expect people to do? So yeah, because the whole country sees it. That's right. All right, guys. Thank, thank you very much for coming right. through. Bye bye. Good evening, caller. The call is gone. Good evening, caller. Hi, lower the volume, please. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening, sir. Yes, you got to lower that volume. Take off the volume completely. I'm trying to take it off. Yeah. Okay, sir. It's off. Come on. Yes, go right ahead. Yes, sir. I, I am... Oh, man, it's still coming on again. I am calling concerning that guy that called about the old age pension. We're getting a feedback. Um... Yes, when, I know. I'm trying to say that. Um, when you come in back, you call cho, us. Cho, back. Cho, that. Cho the phone. Hey. Good evening, caller. Sorry. Sorry. Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Hello. I'm sorry. You are not allowed to complete your call. It's okay, okay. Sorry for that. Hi, good evening, caller. Good evening. Yeah, go right ahead, please. Uh, I, yes, I'm calling about that guy that called about the old age pension. If you are a far, if you are living overseas and to collect a pension in Guyana, now, if you are collecting an old age pension in North America, how can you collect an old age pension in Guyana? That argument That's is wrong right. right off the bat. If you're working in Guyana here, and you I'm did not, your I'm NIS. Not, I'm not, no, I'm not talking about NIS. I'm okay. talking about old age pension. Yeah, yeah, senior citizen okay. pension. Okay. The thing that you senior get every month for 3000 Yeah, yeah. Sure. That's okay. right. Now, if you are collecting senior citizen pension in, 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 let's say, in America, you cannot collect senior citizen pension in Guyana also. That doesn't make sense. 
like the government said already, they said it right on this program, I could recall, the priority is in Guyana and eventually they might expand it. And that has to be correspondent to the, what we have in the Kitija. But um, Gildari, so I stay on the line. Gildari, I don't know if I'm out of order here. Go ahead, be out but, of order. I mean, this is your night, so you take uh, over. But why are you living outside? <laughs> And uh, you want to the three thousand guys? No, 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 no. Freddie Kisun, no, no, no. Freddie Kisun is one hundred and fifty dollars. It's one hundred and fifty dollars. Don't say that. I uh, remember. Uh, Paula, you know what happened? I know two instances. Let me tell you this: the people them should know this because these are people that I know. I went across here. The lady living in Canada. And your husband live in New York, and the two of them crisscross. So there's go and live sometime in Canada and, and sometime in, in New York. And do you know that the authorities over there catch up with them, that they're collecting benefits in Canada and then collecting that? They made up payback almost every cent that you took. That's right. That's there was right. another That's one. Right. Uh -huh. There's another you one that collected it? money during the, the COVID. <laughs> during the COVID, I think the U.S. government was giving them money. A Guyanese? Yes, Guyanese. <laughs> I could tell you because when I go across the hair, these things, I, I start laughing. Because when you believe you're smart, the system is bound to catch you up. She had to pay back yeah, $23,000 U.S. dollars. It's only that they should spend the for it. <laughs> you cannot collect old age pension from two countries. I am not so so sure about that. It, it depends. In Guyana, okay. In Guyana, let's say somebody is living in America and they they relocate back to Guyana. They have to live two years. They have to prove that they live two years in Guyana before they can apply for um, old age pension. I agree. It's a discretion. Everything from the government right now. I don't believe. Uh, I don't believe it. they they have made it um, a kind of permanent, but it was something to to, to offset the limits. Well, I still. think so. I think that that caller, that caller um, needs to look at it more comprehensively. There have to be a set of criteria when you left Guyana. You can't leave Guyana at twenty, and you've given forty years of your life. I mean, I could ima I, I could see if somebody migrated around 55, 60. So it means they lived a, they, 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 the majority of their life in Guyana. But I don't know who he's talking about. He's lumping everybody. Once you live outside and you're Guyanese and you reach no, the age of 65. That. He said right. he's proposing that. But what about people who migrated at 25 and spent 40 years Given his skills to another country, you can come and collect the toilet. But don't, don't let us miss the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room, you cannot have an uncapped uh, um, a fund that is being paid to the old age. Uh, so what you're going to have, this year it's $6 billion. Next year, because everybody, they make a policy and everybody will live abroad and as long as you're over 65, let's say there's 10,000 people now, how are you going to do it? Everything, just like how the government argues that you cannot raise salary in a very, um, how you say it, illogical manner. Because the minute that you do that, it has a knock-on effect on inflation, a whole bunch of other stuff. The, the vendor is going to raise their price. The shopkeeper is going to raise their price. You have to do it in a staggered manner. You can't just raise salary from thirty-three thousand to $200,000, just like that. There there has to be some kind of logics behind it and a way that there's, there's a formula how to do that, I believe, too. Anyway, so thanks for coming through. Let's take this call. Not a problem, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening, caller. Hi, go right ahead, sir. Welcome back, Hilary. Thank you, sir. Go right ahead. My, my contribution in a former uh, chairman for the board in Borby, that one. You got to speak up a little. We barely hearing you, yes. and you coming and broken up. Yeah, so once people know that there is a two-year stay in Guyana, then you're gonna get the old age pension. Many Borbitians would have been migrated back and go back and forth for two years. And being on the board before, we were forced to give them. And I agree that with Freddie that we should look at it. People left here 30, 40 years ago, and there should be a system that the two year come back to two year and reap the benefit. That's one. My, my other thing is that I have is that um, I, I want your, your program been around for close to two years now. If you all can make a, a one-day contribution so we can discuss animal cruelty, 
because um, at least we can be a voice for the dumb animal. I, I see Freddie wrote a good article on that, so I, I, I don't know if we can dedicate one of your, your programs uh, for animal cruelty discussion on that. The right up Freddie Alley, you right, for Freddie Love Animals. Thank you All very right, much. So, for that. I go, Ben. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Good evening, caller. Hello. Hello good evening. Hi, Hello. good evening. Go ahead, sir. Hi, Leonard. Uh, good evening to you and good evening to Mr. Kiso. Good evening, Leonard, sir. I want to touch something that I go. I passed through the PNC with it. I passed through the PP with it. I passed through the Apno AFC. Now back with the PP. I want the government or somebody to, to come and, and explain to the Chinese people what is really going on at the Georgian Hospital. When you go there just to see a doctor, to book your name or see a nurse, why you have to sit there and wait two to three hours and what should we take in that spare money? And you open a hospital from region one to ten, the largest, but when you go to these facilities, to, like the Georgian Hospital, why you have to wait so long to see a doctor? It is a good question. Um... It's a perfect question. I, uh, look, let me tell you something that happened to me. Uh, yesterday, I attended a funeral. Uh, uh, one of my team members, his wife, passed away. Um, and uh, we started uh, started going with them to the hospital. And what I learned um, there, uh, it opened my eyes a little. I have an understanding. So we have teams of doctors coming back from Cuba and elsewhere. And as a matter of policy, you have to serve a number of years with the government before you're fully licensed. I think that's how the system works. And so you'll be in place in hospitals, whether it is a Georgetown hospital or the regional hospital. Do you know that if you were to do a, so you have two problems from there. Immediately, as soon as that tenure is up, those people move on. Um, uh, some of them might stay. The other problem that you have is that some of the doctors, which I think is against the policy of the country, the health policy of the Ministry of Health and the government too, is that a, a number of senior ranking doctors or with experienced doctors who were with the hospital for a long time have attachments uh, with, with with private hospitals. And I got to care for, no, let me don't be careful. Let me put it out there. They have some rackets being run by some doctors in which they refer you to um, the private hospitals. The private. And then they give you the treatment at the private hospital, which could be given at the public hospital. I could tell you that for a fact. Gildari says so, not Predicate soon. So we have a combination of problems, uh, uh, a combination of problems in this working, country. I have been working um, since the government get back in power. Pro bono, I guess, Freddie, right, you know that word very well. And I will show, I, I not everything I go and I, I, I show on social media to give the government a bad name, but you see, this word constructive criticism is, is not every politician can, can swallow that word. And sometimes I will call certain ministers and I will show them, look what is going on on the ground. This is what the situation is. After 17 years, I put my foot back in Georgia Hospital. And the reason why, there's, there's a matter that involves the police and the code judicial system. And they said the last thing you have to go to the uh, Georgia Public Hospital, you cannot take the person to a private doctor. And I, I stand up there and I watch, I said, I, I beg and say, no, let me take this person to a private doctor. No, the police involved, you have to come to the public. Leonard, I don't know from the pilot facility in the waiting area why I know President Ali, if he's listening, just these guys and going after Ramadan and see the condition in a lot of these government agency for one, the Georgia Hospital. Two, you go to GRE, you have over 1,900 staff there on the ground floor, they say. And when you go, you have a light till out on it. I don't, I just think it's Well, it's GRE and not a kettle of fish, but um, I, I find it, uh, you raise uh, something there that bothers the hell out of me too. 
I can't understand if you have, and let me tell you this, my experience with Georgetown Hospital in the last couple of weeks, I must say that I'm impressed given the circumstance um, of how they are trying to cope with what is happening there. Because don't underestimate. Uh, in America, if you got to go to a hospital and if you were to be treated, there's a barrage of tests that they put you through before they even start giving you treatment. Because they, that, is a, that is it. Because if anything goes wrong, nobody wants to be sued. Across here, you're dealing with a man walking you get a cut penny foot there's nothing thing they can dress the foot even if the manga sugar or whatever else it is we go through that is what we do here but i can't understand a manager who's sitting on top of that department in the emergency room knowing that it would not or would not know that the toilet is is not functioning i that you cannot tell me that you cannot tell me that. Well, you I, have to be I going through your ward. But, um, but, 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 no, no, no. no, but you I, have... I, if you, you know, I don't want to call people names. I went to a senior post on the hospital and I started to show him. You know, we watched many said, by, you know, this is not today's story. I come and meet it. I said, you come and meet it, but you got to fix it. You are being paid a hefty sum of money but they're, to they're, sit they're, in that chair. Their management... And, <laughs> their management practiced 50, 60 yes, years ago. The toilet, the toilet, the toilet, the, 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 the floor would have a particular uh, let, me, let me stop you there. There's a way how you could fix that. Whoever is a manager or the CEO or wherever they're sitting in, let them use the toilet that the people use it every day. It's how fast they fix it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very much for coming through, my brother. <laughs> Bye. Freddie Kisson, they should do that. No, but let them walk a day in the shoes of the people along in the room. I think you have management practices anyway. Let's see what happened. Good evening, caller. Hello. Hello. Hi, yes, go right there. Sir. Hi. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome back, um, um, Mr. Gildari and uh, Freddie. Good night, sir. Good night. Um, yeah, I was listening. Yeah, I was listening to that call, the, uh, the last caller talking about, you know, the waiting time at the Georgian Hospital. And I, yeah, I, I'm work, I've been working in the healthcare um, industry in, in New York here for the past 26 years. And I understand what the difficulty there is. And the fundamental thing is that there is no regulatory or standards. They have something there of, of what the Ministry of Health has, but it's a joke. Now that I have, we have Mount Sinai in there, I think it's going to get better because I know the Mount Sinai system very well. And it, we, what we need to institute there, building these hospitals, but we have to get the infrastructure in place to manage the quality. For example, what he described there of a patient coming into the emergency room. Where I work, that thing, it is measured. Every hospital in the healthcare system, there are metrics to measure. For example, the, the emergency room, it's called door to needle. From the time you come into the door and you register, that is clocked. From the time you are seen by a doctor, that is clocked. And there's regulations. If you don't meet these um, the, the standards that it is recommended, then you don't get full reimbursements. And, you know, certain situation in the city hospital in New York, you're going to find a lot of delays and so because they are kind of, you know, um, based on insurance and everything. So the bottom line, what I'm saying here is that they need to put together a robust system of standards and hold these hospitals accountable. Besides that, you have to have a very strong, robust quality assurance and quality system that is metrics driven. We don't have that in Guyana. I am... I kind of wanted to, to offer my service to come back there. I'm thinking about it seriously, especially with the, I would really want to see the healthcare system explode and be successful in Guyana, you know, and anyone who has this type of thing, we want to, I would want to come back there, even pro, you know, work pro bono and try to help the system establish it and then they can take it off. So these are the things that are missing in Guyana and the culture itself, that people, no one has the responsibility, but these things have to be driven by quality initiatives. You have to establish like certain center of excellence and have people in there who are measuring these things and holding people accountability. You know, there's accountability. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that, that's my little piece on that. No, I, I, I thank you. On this, uh, I, I thank you very much for that. Um, I tell you one thing, um, and this is a very important point. I, I like those kind of things, but you have to be realistic also about it too. Everything has to, in America, the healthcare um, facility is being either the government pays for some part 
or the insurance company step in, Medicaid and Medicare and everything. Um, I remember a story that I was recently told. A lady, they, they have a, um, what you call a, the rehab center where they care for people who probably got a disability or they're too old or something. And the person fell down in the, 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 the toilet and uh, the nurses were not there and the nurse's assistant weren't there. Guess what? They had to write a ton of reports because the authority, you don't want the authority to come in because that opened yourself to suing. But in Guyana, you have to make sure that the connection is there, that when you have this kind of regulatory body, that you have the kind of funding that is available because everything is related. But I agree with you. Though those are the places that if you want to have a no. developed country that we should go to. That, those, are the, uh, those are the quality that we should we want. Right. I agree. And the thing is, we're gonna take, we have to take steps, baby, baby steps. Baby steps. To Thank get you there. very much. Yeah, yeah. Um, Thank no, you very no, much. baby steps to get there. But I think we need to have the resources or the people who, who with the know-how of how to do this. I would encourage you to read up on in the United States on a body called the Joint Commission. Every hospital system in the country, they're scared of these guys when if they should come down there. It's not really scared. They hold standards very high. Man, the other day, you, you know, I, th I thank you very much for that. The other day, you're talking about regulatory body. Freddie Kisson, were you following the, 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 the fight over TikTok? Mm -hmm. and you know when i look at that i don't probably agree with 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 what everything that is happening i believe there should be some artistic freedom and it's and tiktok has been a way that a lot of people have been able to grow the business because people see it people click on it but guess what when you look at the way that regulators are able to wield the powers and question people about what they're doing and how they're using those platforms and the danger of it i like it so thank you very much to coming through. Thank, thank you very much. Bye. Good evening, caller. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Gulari. Good evening, sir. Welcome back to the program. Thank you, sir. Um, I'd like to make a little observation, um, a little complaint about the road here at Mokwe at the front. Where are you going here? The road here that is next to the police station? Yeah, they wake up, they do that is they walk in taxi, right, and they're right to the road edge. When you come in, in the line in the morning, you see how the guy them come from the outside, push out the hand, and come straight in front of direct to the edge of the road, they can't turn, they have no police. I don't know if they could put them more, more inside and people could walk in and go, and they have enough space that they could go and park and people could walk and go and take the car, they pass in a whole country and no police is to be out there. Well, I mean, I know if I tell you that because if next door got the, the, the Providence police station and yeah, that yeah, happening and under the nose. They got a bar right up and they're selling beer or rum all day, all night, and I don't know if you're You know, you have any idea who owned the cars, Sam? Uh, I hear you. You have any idea who owned those cars? Well, there's the next thing we'll be busy seeing police and walking down there. <laughs> All right, I didn't say it, brother, man. I'm just asking. I, I like to know. I like to educate because myself. The line will be like from the first, which tells the public who no police in the media. And the guy, when they go in, they come for the outside and push in the hand and pull in front of you. And if you don't give them a pass, they cost you by your mother and hand, man. I think right for the door, they put a big long plank there. They move it and they're right to the door. Right? So they, they move there. So when it's reversing now, and the traffic pass in the public road is causing a whole confusion because you have staff to go out and come in. Thank you very much for coming through, sir. Bye bye. Good, good. And the next thing. Yes. Tell Mr. Kisu is still waiting for now, Mr. Siwat. Concerning the, the, the complaint I gave you for two months, how he says he's a good friend and he's, he's doing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, I, I, I will, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> I know you're talking about the water yeah, thing. I make a complaint yeah, about yeah. the NDC. Was yeah, yeah. So you. I backed yeah. him. I backed him. I backed him. Give the guy up. I've, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've asked him to come on. I've asked him to come on and be yeah, with, no be with us in the call in. Because All right. Go. 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 He said he will come. He said he will come. He said he will come. Thank you Bye. very much, sir. Bye bye. Good evening, Carlo. Hello. Hello. Good evening, gentlemen. Yes, good evening, sir. Thank you. Uh, I glad to see you back on the program. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. I I called Uncle Freddy a couple of weeks ago concerning what my daughter did not receive her. Oh my. Cash grant. 
Again, no, sir? What, what was it? Sorry, I, I missed the story. What's the story? Again, no, he called up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No. So, 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 no. so, so yeah. hold a sec. We can't go on with yeah. this. Uh, Gildari, the reason why Gildari is not on this program is Gildari has his business and he's busy. So, we, this is about the fifth time or the sixth time in two years that yeah. you've raised this. You have to speak to someone in authority because. This is about the sixth time you, you spoke to this. Is what this is what the daughter not getting to? Uh, but so, yeah. so I, I understand yeah. and my heart goes out to you. But what can we do? You need to fix this thing. You need to get somebody. You need to go to um, one of the parliamentary representatives in your area. No, no hold on. Something. Is this a, the, 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 the gentleman with the... the same um, question. Of, no, no, hold on, hold on. Is two it the daughters, same with the two, two daughters? daughters I already gave you, one. didn't I give you the number to Ms. Dr. Vindia Prasad as minister? No, uh, when I, uh, yesterday I went, yesterday I No, 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 but did, did I give I you the number with, with, with the minister? They, they, they didn't work out? No. Low your volume, low your volume. But did I give you the number for the minister? That's what I'm asking. No, you never give me a minister. Ah, okay. Give me, give me a call tomorrow. Let me give you the minister number and so you can So, I'm on, on this matter, okay. please speak to the minister or someone in the ministry. We can't go on with this. You call this about the sixth time. We yeah, but Freddie, 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 <laughs> if the man and the, the, the government is not listening to the man. No, what I whoever, don't want the government, they, 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 No, they, what I don't want him to do uh -huh. is to place his faith in us oh, to okay, see if okay, he okay, can help sure. us. Whereas he has to seek other um other av avenues. Because it's heartbreaking that you have somebody raising an issue and I'm sure that some did they tell you just for the sake of arguments, did they tell you why they're not looking at your case or they just refuse to look at your case? <laughs> Okay, so Thank call you me tomorrow. Me. I'm gonna send this case here to the minister and let the minister personally because we need to have this fixed. Okay. It's impossible that you would be calling every right. week and every week. Thanks Thank for you coming very much. Uh, Gildari. Mm -hmm. I, I think something is wrong, Dave. I think he may, he may have a, a problem evening, that you understand. Hello? 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 Okay. Yes, you? go right ahead. All right, nice to have you back. Yes, sir, go ahead. All right, I just call about this election thing, man. This election, dead store cost in more than 100 million US. Which, Which election, election is that? The general election, which is next year, which? our general election. Oh, general election next yes. year. Will you get a figure from, bro? It's costing what? No, no. I, I don't think that is just an assumption. Okay, good. Yes, sure. You can cost more than 100 million U.S. to host that election. All right. More than 100 so, million U.S.? No, let, 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 let him, let's follow your train of thought. Go right ahead. 20 million U.S. For a matter, we could take the money and just share it up between the people. Uh -huh. So don't bother with the election. All right. So, so but what happened? What happened with the um, the uh, like like Aubrey Norton and so who want to go in office and what happened? Yeah, what happened people. with democracy? The people are more getting money. Get up, please. <laughs> what I like the way you think. Right. Thanks for coming, too, sir. All right. Uh -huh. Gilari, I wanted to say something about this guy. <laughs> Gilari, it, it's not making sense. Maybe there's something missing that he's not inquiring about. He is saying for the past two years that one daughter get the book, they're not giving the other daughter the book. Uh, maybe there's some missing link there. That Last missing. year he called almost every show. Yeah. But why uh, are they not giving... Thing. But no, but I would have intervened because I sent that matter to the ministry. I, I can't remember. Maybe, it's maybe something, is, something is not no, right but on I don't, this part. I, I don't anyway, understand look. how to give it to one that and not right, give it to right. the maybe, other. It, it doesn't make right. sense. Maybe good so. evening, caller. Yes, good evening. A quick couple of points. Um, to the callers them before, America doesn't have old age pension. And to Freddie... Um, I'd be good if you can get uh, like a virtual from somebody from Israel so that you could get that viewpoint from them 
of what is going on on their take of what is going on in Gaza. You get a lot of the stuff from the other side to show the unjust going on, to hear what's their take on that. When I said they don't have old age pension, they have Social Security where you put in your pension benefits, or your Social Security benefits, and then there's something called SSI for like poor people or injured people. That's all I would like to see. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. So in yeah, essence, that, that, what the gentleman right? There has to be a model that works for the country, and everything come yeah, back to the that that again. that data. I think maybe some criteria are not being met or something is wrong but you can't tell me for the past two years we've been going two years now he keeps saying the same thing two daughters are physically challenged one daughter is getting a book the other daughter cannot get her book it can't take so long and i mean no something is wrong maybe he's missing something anyway let's just go to the call maybe he's missing something Hillary. all right i can tell you my thoughts on that just now good evening caller um, I was just wondering, why is the opposition saying so uh, much about corruption against the government and there's no proof? Uh, I mean, the last last time PVP was in government, the same thing they did, and people were so gullible, they listened to these things and, and they voted against them. Even to uh, soon he wrote against, he wrote stuff like that before. There's several and ways that you can look. Uh, there's several ways you can look at it. One, you need to do something as the opposition. When you you're in the opposition, you need to do something. The reality and which 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 tears with my soul is that you just heard the call about that man complaining there. If I was in the opposition, I would want to hear something like that because I ended up at that man place tomorrow morning to solve that matter. That's points in my book. You know, in some places, New York and so, how those Congress people, I pay attention because you look at the, the how, how uh, politics work across there. Congressmen and councilmen and everything fight for every single vote. They go in and they tell all the lies, how are they going to do and things like that. They knock at everybody, door fresh garbage bins, everything, just to get that vote. You mean for tell me some of the people here and the only thing you could talk about Barrett Jack Dio and Sue and corruption and that's the only thing that we could talk about? What about the garbage situation, the crime, the guns in the young people's hands? You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I understand what you're saying. It tears my soul that there's nothing else we could talk about. And then, then the writers in the papers, they, all the newspapers are, uh, are writing on negative things about this government. You never see anything positive about this government. Never. Well, that, that you can't say the newspapers. It's the Kaicho News and the Starbuck News. There are the other news, daily newspapers, Ghana Times, Guyana Chronicle. It's, it's a particular mindset in the Starbuck News. And then, of course, you got... Uh, wild man, Glen Lal. Anyway, sir, so thanks for but coming through. Thanks for coming through. Mr. Kisun, yeah. Mr. Kisun yeah. in your previous time, right, you used to write about the government, right? We, you think, <laughs> uh, were you right when you were saying all these things? Well, it depends upon, you have to be specific. You have to, um, you have to say what, um, what you're talking about. Don't forget, um, uh, things were thrown in my face. My contract was terminated. I, I did. That. I didn't imagine. I didn't imagine that. Did I? I got sued for libel. No. Are you saying? Are you saying those things didn't happen? Anyway. No, I don't. Anyway, good. But, but um, uh, the beautiful thing, but there's a good point that you raised here. Could you criticize this government here and then turn back and then you know? Um, uh, find some things that are good with them. I think in a healthy democracy, those things should be encouraged. If you find there's something good with the government, you you give them um, the, the kudos. If you find that they're screwing up in some way, you should also criticize them. And those are things that we a healthy democracy thrive on. But, but before you go, are you there? It's hard me. I just heard you say that that most of the 80% of the, pop, uh, the uh, politicians are corrupt. Is this on both sides? 
Um, I was sorry. I, I, I should, should, should have put that. 80% of the opposition are corrupt. And they're corrupt, and I'm, I'm probably going to speak to that a little, little later. I, I've been... I've been asking my soul. I'm gathering some information. Corruption in office. Corruption in office is when parliamentarians when parliamentarians do illegalities. But um, um, I like your drift, though. Your drift is to erase me from history. I don't know why you want to erase me from history. You know, you haven't mentioned all the things that happened to me, as if it didn't happen. But anyway, so thanks for coming through. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Good evening, Carlo. Yes, good evening, gentlemen. I'm sure you agree we are both living in the 21st century, are we? Yes, I think everybody knows that. Yes, so why do we have horse carts on, on traversing our, our highways and our throughways in this country? Why do we have um, animals such as horses and cows and endangering the lives of our, our citizens on the roads. I travel the roads every morning and every day, and I see horses, cows, crossing the roads and the busy highways, unattended. I, I... <laughs> why is this happening? You should be asking why the horse car don't have insurance so as on that, and why they don't have zebra crossing for the, the cows. Why don't they go a little farther than that? It's I think, something. well, I am. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I once said on this program that I wish there would be some ministry with some budget that they could go to each one of these horse cart owner and, you know, finance a, a canter truck for them because I think the age of putting those horses, to, uh, it's, it's a scooty to animal. I think those, that age is gone. It's cruelty to animal. That. I it's cruelty to animal. You can't take the man from Sapphire. He going down at the hardware store and he making a living. So you can't take away his horse like you're taking away his living. But there should be there should be some budget budgetary allocation some way to call these guys together and ask them if they would you know they can drive or and and, and buy a little canter truck for each one of them and. Take those horses off the road, man. This is the 21st century. I can imagine. It breaks your uh, heart, man. I can imagine. See those horses Let's put it in perspective. I can imagine this government take a policy tomorrow morning and it says, you know, we'll be banning all high, high scat. Opposition jumps up. You're trying to put poor people out on the bread line. But you would be. <laughs> but you will you, be. I, I, think, I think also you, we, we could also have, 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 have a discussion if we have the kind of money and these things are a danger to people um they they are cruelty to animals and so many other reasons they mess up they mess up on the street and so on and nobody picks it up uh, or the horse cart or no, just leave it there and you got to drive over it but if you're to come up uh, with, with those kind of budget that is say look here's an alternative for you to do we don't want you to work the horse it's illegal for you to do it but we could give you a grant for you to go into any business that you want um, those are the kind of progressive thinking that you would want to see with any government that is in place. I would want to hear that kind of conversation. Well, I totally agree with 100%, both of you guys, with Freddie's suggestion and yours. But how do we deal with cows and horses crossing unattended in the middle of our um, throughways and highways? Like the, the new highway that is built there, I don't know what it's called, Heroes Highway. I see animals, cows in the morning, just crossing, unattended, no one's there, horses. What's going on? Who's responsible for this? Who's taking care of these animals? I agree you with know, you. Who are the owners of the animals? Mm. Is, is, there, is, is there any repercussions, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much for coming through. I think you've raised some relevant points here, very Great. important yeah. to the quality thank of life. Thank you. Great, Bye -bye. good evening. Bye. Bye. Good evening, Carlo. Good evening, Mr. Fisno. Good evening. You know why I do think These people would have called from overseas. And they come back home. They're talking about the cows and things grass in the world. When you go to India, you see cows. And they had to see cows in different villages. And they got um, things that they, they, they got traffic. The next thing I want to see, the government is spending a lot of money. And... I they got to 
give these contractors, they, they got to see people overlooking these works. We got some shady works going on, and the people collecting the money. I don't know if the REO don't have the knowledge or the people don't have the knowledge, but they got to get the oversight body to look after all of these things. But this way the engineers come in and the clerk works and so on. There there are people who are looking after it. Now if you want to have a conversation on whether they're doing the work, well that was not a conversation. But uh, they are no no, li listen to me. We cannot we cannot have the conversation without saying there are systems that is designed before you could go and get a contract. You have to prove to the the tender board and who the, the regional tender board and national tender board that you meet those requirements. You have the personnel, you have the equipment, and you have the experience. And if you could prove to them that, then for the government, on behalf of the government, on those small projects and so on, a building a bridge or so, the clerk works on the regional um, tender board or regional office. They're the ones who is in charge of regulating or overseeing or supervising. On the National Tender Board on international projects, the government appoint a consultancy group, like the airport had a consultancy group uh, or a company which I oversees know, those work. Now, I if you want to have a conversation as to whether those things are working, that's another conversation. Well, uh, they, 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 they international, they go right, but they have some of them there by the school and everything. She is slammed, ba 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 and the people collecting the damn money. Right. Well, then who do you blame? You blame the contractor. I always say it. You blame the contractor. The contractor will do maybe their scampish and they will do what they got to do. Who is the custodian of the funds? Is the engineers and the clerk who works and the REO? All right, all right. Thank you very much. Good evening, caller. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Is this the Asha? If there's what? This is the Gildari Freddy Kisun show. Yes, yes, yes. Go right I'm trying ahead. to get you to the show. Yes. Yeah, um, you know, okay, no problem. I I love the, the, the interaction with the audience. One of the things that I would say is this. Um, in terms of the political atmosphere in Guyana, it is okay for people to pinpoint things that the government is not doing right. It, it holds the government more accountable. So let those things come. Let those things come out. Let the folks bring things that they want to see the government do better. It could only make the, the current government act on things that are stressing needs for the, the populace. And even if the opposition comes out and say one thing or the other, that's how democracy works. You can't just shun things and put them... In, into the background, you should be capable of addressing all of the pressing needs and concerns, and it would only make Guyana a better, better place. What do you say? Yeah, I agree with you. Um, people have to have their, their say. Um, freedom of speech, of course, has uh, its limitation. You can't shout fire in a crowded cinema, but I, I believe that in the end, um, Every person is entitled to their view, and um, those views Absolutely. should be given. And also, I think on this program, we have pointed out things that I am sure the president and the ministers and many people don't know about. Some of these guys from the Ministry of Public Works doing things, and when they finish and you look at it, you say, what the hell? I mean, I, I am sure some of these things the president don't know. So I... I, I, I Gildavi will come in here. I agree with you. It's fine. I have no problem with y'all. Okay. I have no problem with y'all. I, 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 go ahead. Sorry. One other thing I want to pinpoint, because I don't know if it's um, if most of the, the, the viewers are aware of the fact that Venezuela just signed into law. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, um, yeah. Someone raised it on the program. You, yeah. you guys know already discussed that? Yeah, it was okay. raised on the program. Okay. All right. Thank you okay, very much. Not, not uh, a problem. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, sir. Well, Venezuela could sign into law anything. They could sign and say to take more visas. Hello? That's what we do. Sorry. Hello? Hello? All right. It looked like gt and got a problem with critic phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh. one last call. Very quickly, caller. Last call. Go right ahead. 
Hello? A person. Good evening, caller. This is a Gilgawi show. Yes, yes. go ahead. Gilgawi is back. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if he bought any money from the business he's doing. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. Hello? Hello, what's going on? I want to ask you live. You're live, you're live. Go right ahead. No, I'm not live. So, so. You gotta take off whatever you're listening to and just talk to us. So, quickly, our time has come. You're, you're taking up time from other callers. Sorry, man. Bye bye. Sorry about that. I've just been told uh, um, he does have about two minutes more. Um, very quickly, Freddie. Um, I think uh, issue was raised there uh, about why people would probably uh, call through at such a program. The ministers would have their outreaches. Um, there's several ministries, there's several NGOs, uh, several state agencies. And I think people should feel free to um, go to them and complain. The president goes on many outreaches. The reality is that when you go there, thousands of people, we have 700,000 plus people. It's impossible to reach all those ministers to make those complaints, but I do believe that uh, the ministries and the government should try a little harder at every one of the ministry to put a help there some way along the way. I think it's going to help because it's obvious that people are reaching out. Here. One quick call. Good evening, caller, very quickly. This is Mr. Critic. No, this is not Mr. Critic. This is Gilary and Freddy. What happened? I think he wanted to get you to quit. Oh, okay. okay. Critic. Yeah. All right. I think I've been told. Let's see. Let's see. Hello? Hello. Hi, good evening. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Gildari. Yes, go ahead, sir. Go right ahead. Thank you. Um, this, we'll be in the 21st century, right? Somebody said it not too long ago. I hope so. Yes. So, what's going on with the blackout? Ah, you Why want to go there now? And the stupid thing about it, it's hooked up to the water. And then when there's blackout, there's no water. Okay, so let, very quickly, let me tell you what. This I'm going to answer you up because we're out of time. Thank you very much. Okay. GPL got a problem, couple problems. One, the, the the three things that the GPL has, they have to generate the power, then they have to the, use a transmission line, and then they got to use it, uh, the, what do you call it, those transformers to, to help distribute the power. Now, they have, Guyana is going at such a rapid rate that they can't, I think by the end of this year, unless they get new engines, they can end up in some major, major problem. We have agent lines that need to, to, to do, while they've done some work to, I think, a 40 million US dollars to change some of the long distance lines. That, uh, I, I think they have to change out a lot of those transformers as well. So you have two problems, generators being done, bad fuel, I understand they had a shipment or something that ended up as bad fuel in these generators. So we can't have the situation we've been having the situation 30 40 years now it's still continuing in a modern day like today they got to fix that we're supposed to have the gas energy project and hopefully that stabilizes it but it's still got to have new lines new transformers Freddie is soon closing yeah uh we media like the police and the hospital we work on holiday so there will be a program on pagua 8.30 to 9.30, and we will have our call in on Good Friday. We work on um, we work on holidays. Media don't have holidays. So back to Gildari. So there's a program Monday on Pagwa, and there's a program on Good Friday coming. Thank you very much. Uh, Freddie, um, it's been a pleasure being back. I can't promise you that every day I'm going to be here, but I'm... Um... It's it's a good thing to serve the people of this country, and uh, I think this forum here, we've tried um, to put it up there to raise those issues, and uh, we're human beings also. We are not going to have to disagree with everything that you say, and we're going to disagree a lot of the times, but guess what? It's all in the interest of building this country to move it to the next level. 
And as we go forward here this weekend, I want to appeal to you as usual, stay safe on the roadways. I hope that you and your family have a very peaceful weekend. We headed into Pagua on Monday. A happy Pagua, safe Pagua to you. Next Friday is Good Friday, and then the following Monday would be Easter Monday. Stay safe, uh, my, my good people of this country and from the diaspora, wherever you are. Thank you for joining the Gildari Freddy Kisun Show.